And uh, let's talk about customizing invoices. So if you were going to set up a brand new QuickBooks Online account and you were to do nothing in terms of customization, your invoices would look pretty standard. There's one standard look for the invoices. So when you click on the Quick Create button, which is that circle with a plus sign, and then you go down to Invoices, okay, that's going to open up a brand new invoice. That's the screen that we do to create a brand new invoice. So um, we're going to first start with a standard invoice. So I'm going to click here where it says Customize on the bottom of the screen, and then notice that this says Standard. This is a standard invoice that was set up by default. So if you want to create a new, brand new uh, style or a brand new template, you would click on New Style. So once we click on New Style, we click on Yes, okay? And uh, in, in this one, we're going to be able to give it a name. Again, this is only QuickBooks Online, so only QuickBooks Online, okay? So we're going to give this uh, name, we're going to call it uh, Template 1 Invoice. Okay, then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on where it says dive in with template. There's five standard styles or template that QuickBooks gives you. One is called the Airy Classic, which is uh, this one that you see here. The other one is called Modern, which is that one that you see there. The third one is called Fresh, which kind of gives it a gray background, um, a little bit like a sort of a light gray background. Then we have Bold which gives it a basically a color background, and then we have friendly, okay? So you have to pick from those uh, in order to figure out um, which is the one that you like the best. So we'll pick, let's say, modern. So we'll start with modern. And then we're gonna click on add unique logo. So we're gonna click on the add logo button, and then we're gonna go look for a picture or a logo in, uh, in our computer somewhere. So I'm gonna find a headshot of myself, and we'll make that the logo. Okay, and then that takes usually a few seconds to process. Then I'll click on save, and notice that QuickBooks automatically puts the logo on the top right of the screen. Now I can uh, change the placement. So there's a couple buttons I can press here to change the placement. So I can choose where I want it, so I'm gonna put it on the left. I can also go small, medium, or large. So that's as as much customization we have with the logo anyway. Then we're gonna click on splash some color, we're going to pick basically a color theme, right? So I can go through the different colors and pick the color theme that makes the most sense. Uh, usually you want to match that. You want to match your logo or match one of the colors of your logo. It's really up to you what you want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, the bright red one here for now. Then we're going to click on uh, Get Choosy with uh, Fonts. And then we'll, there's basically four font choices here. So I'll pick Helvetica and I'll pick uh, 12 point. But I have uh, four, I mean, three point sizes and uh, four uh, font options. Then when it says, when in doubt, print it out, that's really asking you about margins. So this allows you to change your margins up. So I'll show you. I'm going to click on preview PDF so you can see for a second what that looks like. And then this is what the PDF would look like, right? So you have basically a preview of, uh, of what that looks like. If you want to increase those margins, that white space in the top, on the sides, or in the bottom, then we're going to uh, change the, the uh, margin levels in, in this screen right here. So when we go to edit print settings, we can change the margins. And if I wanted to give it maybe a three inch margin in the top, I can do that and leave that blank space in the top. And that would be useful if maybe you're using a letterhead or if, you're, uh, if for whatever reason you want to have some, uh, some space in the top. Now I'm going to put this back to half an inch. There's also fit pre-printed form with paste up window envelope. So what this is, is this will change the organization of the invoice. So you can basically fold the invoice in three and fit it into a window envelope. That's what that uh, checkbox means. And then use letterhead paper. That is uh, meant to, uh, f- for you to configure it for you, for you to have about a, uh, an inch or so in the letterhead in the top and uh, QuickBooks will not insert your contact information. So I'm going to click Reset so we can get back, uh, get back to normal here. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, Done. Okay, so that's the, the overall look of the invoice. Now, we can also change these fields, like which fields 
do we want to see in the invoice, right? So I'm going to click on customize again, and then I'm going to click on edit current. Okay, actually, let me go back for a second. Let me go back. And I'm going to change the template. So I'm going to click on customize, change it to my template number one. I have to be on that, and then I'll click on edit current because I need to be on that template in order to be able to edit. So we're gonna to go to content. Inside content, you're gonna have three boxes. You have the header box in the top. We have the table box in the middle, which is often referred to as the columns. Then we have the footer box in the bottom. So based on uh, you know, what, which area you want to edit, you would just click on the one that you want to edit. So I'm gonna click on the top one first, and then I'm gonna add a phone number. I can change the company name. I can change the, the email. I can click on address and modify the address if I want to. I can hide country, right? Because it says US, I can hide the country and I can modify the website, remove the website if I want to. So I have total flexibility there. Also, if I don't want this to say invoice and I want it to say something else, uh, let's say final invoice or performa invoice, whatever I want, I can certainly do that just by changing uh, that, that number up there, that name up there. Now we also have the form number so that's the invoice number that you see uh, right here where it says final invoice number. Uh, I can uncheck or check that if I want to show the invoice number. Typically, we always show the invoice number. And also where it says custom transaction numbers, that allows me to edit or modify the invoice number before I print it or before I mail it. So if I don't click on custom transaction numbers, QuickBooks will assign a default invoice number. If I click on this checkbox, I'll be able to change that if I want to. Now, notice that you can also change, uh, enable or disable the shipping address, the terms, and the due date. So all these things can be added or removed uh, if I want to, okay? So notice that all these things can be added or removed if I want to, okay? So that's, those, were, uh, those boxes there. Then we have custom fields, and I'm gonna click on manage custom fields, and that's gonna take me to the custom field screen. Now, this is only available in QuickBooks Online Advanced. This is the most expensive version of QuickBooks. It's about $150 a month. If you want to create custom fields, you would have to be uh, on this edition. Anyway, let me go back to the invoices again and edit the template. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with the custom fields because custom fields might require an entire webinar dedicated to talking about why you would need them and, and how they would be useful. So that's the custom fields area. So I'm gonna click on the second uh, uh, area in the middle, which is the table. And this is where I can uh, show if I wanna show an account summary. So notice that I can do an account summary. So if this customer owes me for multiple invoices in the past, do I want to show the current invoice plus anything that they owe me in the past? So that's what this checkbox is for. Then we have this, uh, columns section, I can mess with the width in each of these. So if I wanna make any of these columns wider, skinnier, uh, thinner, whatever, I, I have some flexibility there. Of course, you know, it's restricted to how many columns you have in there. I can also disable some of these columns. So if I don't wanna see a date associated with each specific line item, I can disable that. If I want to include uh, the description, of the item as well under the item name. I can click on that. If I don't uh, click on this box, then it will be a separate column altogether. So I have a couple of choices. I can either have a separate description column or I can have a description under the item name. So you got total flexibility on, on the one that makes the most sense for you. Then I have the quantity and rate and I can uh, include that or exclude that if I want to. I can also change the order. So if I wanted the quantity to be the first one all the way in the top, I can just change the order of these things until we get to the order that we want. So I can move, uh, the, I can move some of these columns in order and change uh, where I want them. So I can change uh, these columns around based on uh, where I want them just by dragging up and down. I can, I can also I click here, it says show more activities. And this is more complex stuff. This has to do with whether you have um, items, if you want to group them based on everything you did it based on the day, assuming that you're, 
using a timesheet to create an invoice. You can uh, collapse uh, the multiple rows if they all have the same date. You can do progress invoicing lines. That's only if you want to show that. You can show markup if you're uh, charging for billable time and materials that we can show. Maybe if we have time today, we'll talk about that. If not, I will save it for another webinar and then we can include the employee's name if we are billing uh, from a timesheet. So these activity options has to do with when I'm using uh, time and materials to create the invoice. For now, we'll hide that. And if we have time, we'll, we'll cover that. So that's the customization of that table. Then under in the footer, I have a couple of things that can enable. I can enable discount, uh, which allows me to just add a percentage discount onto the invoice. I can add a deposit box if I want to have the invoice show you know, as part of the calculation deposits that were um, received with the first invoice. And um, we have a state estimate summary. That's only when you have a, an estimate uh, before the invoice that's attached together. So that's what that checkbox is for. Then message to customers here at the bottom, I can say, uh, thank you, please send payment ASAP, right? And then I can also add another additional text. I can say 30 day money back warranty, call 1-800-HECTOR-4-SERVICE, right? So whatever it is that we want to add, we can add that in there and we can, you know, left adjust it or right adjust it or center adjust it. So on the footer, we have two, two sections where we can type information, right? The customer message and the additional footer. Then we're going to click on emails. This is a very important tab. This is uh, for the template itself. So this is where I decide whether I want to uh, have the default text or type my own text. So I can say something like, you know, thank you for your business, your product has been shipped, please pay ASAP, or whatever you want. So that's the default message that it's going to show up every time you, uh, you create an invoice. Okay, you can also change the subject. So you can say your shipped product invoice. Okay, so something like that, right? So I can add that in there uh, as the subject line. So whatever you want to put there, I'm going to put here from Hector Garcia. Okay, so this becomes the default uh, message that shows up in the subject line. This becomes the default message that shows up on the body of the email. Up here in the top, I can choose to attach a PDF version of the invoice or not. If I don't attach a PDF version, then it would just be this digital HTML email version. So I recommend that you always attach the PDF just in case because you will notice that some of your customers are going to have some, uh, are going to want to save their PDFs for whatever reason. People have their own um, reasons that they want to do this. So obviously you want to give them a chance to do that. Then under the reminder email, you can say, uh, you can type what you want the default text to be when you send your customer a reminder that they haven't paid. So we can say, hey, we have not received payment. Please pay ASAP or set up a payment plan to avoid collections, right? Whatever it is that you want to uh, type. So this text has to do with reminders, which are different than emailing invoices, which we'll, we'll cover that. So we'll cover that pretty soon. Okay, so that would be it. And then we have payments. Now, this checkbox here, which is a lot of what we'll be talking about today, has to do with how, how great uh, enabling payments in QuickBooks Online is. This has to do on whether or not you want the customer to see a little pay now button. So if you want your customers to see a pay now button or pay invoice button in the, in, in the in, in message of the invoice, so you see that pay invoice green button. If I disable this, you don't get that. So you have to enable it here. But before you can enable it here, you have to enable it in the account as 
as a whole. So we'll cover what the process is to enable payments. But this is where in the template of the invoice, you can choose whether or not you want to see that pay now button uh, as part of your default template. Okay, so then we're going to click on uh, preview PDF so we can see what that looks like. And let's switch over so you can see that. So that's what that looks like. That's what the PDF looks like. We see the 30 day money back guarantee message at the bottom. We see the customer message. We see the description, product name, all the fields that we uh, turned on, the custom fields, build to address, ship to address, header information, logo, uh, information about the uh, subtotal, all that information in there. So let me go ahead and close that and share the screen again. And that will be it. We'll go ahead and click on done. So that's uh, as much uh, customization as we get when we create a, an invoice. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to create a new invoice here. And I'm going to disable online payments for a second, just so you can see what the invoice looks like when you send it to your customer. So I'm going to send the customer an invoice for $1,500. I'm, I'm not going to enable uh, payments for the time being which is these checkboxes here, because this is the default way that QuickBooks is. QuickBooks doesn't have uh, electronic payments by default. So I'm gonna click on save and send. And then you see the default message that we wrote. So this has to do with the default message that we wrote. We have the default subject line that we wrote. Notice that online payments is unchecked. And then I'm gonna click on send and close. So I'm going to switch over to my email where I send that to. So you, just so you can see what the invoice looks like when your customer gets uh, that invoice. So, okay. So this is what the email looks like. Right? Here's the subject line. Here's the person, the, the, the company that sent it. Here's the two, which is this was my customer. Then we have uh, the name of the company up here. We have the text. We have the amount due. We have the information of the invoice in the details. All the way in the bottom, we see a PDF. So they can download uh, the PDF and view the PDF as well. And then they have a print or save button. They don't have a pay now button because we haven't enabled uh, payments yet. So this is the default way that QuickBooks presents invoices via email.